Good day, everybody. Fresh start to a beautiful morning here. Welcome back to another vlog. I'm actually not going fishing. I'm standing in my bass boat right now. But I'm getting ready to leave. We're going from one cactus filled area to another. I was just hearing some turkeys that were getting off the roost in a big oak tree across the creek here. I'm coming down to just pack everything up in my boat and leave and go down to the deer lease. And I got ants all up in my boat, apparently. And they have just colonized in the silver bullet overnight. So I haven't been down to the deer lease um, in a very, very long time. And it's time to go down there and start checking things out. And my buddy Mullet Man, who hunts on this lease, he's been wanting to make a bow. And I've got a bunch of extra bow wood. So I was going to take that down to him. Beautiful cabin here on the water. And we're going from that beautiful sleeping arrangement to probably sleeping in a hammock tonight. So it's time to start roughing it. Get a little gruff, get a little gruff going for the deer season. Thank you. I saw the root beer colored skeeter from across the lake. I thought I heard my name. Turns out you're a fishing freak. I've never heard the root beer skeeter before, but that's that's old school, dude. Makes sense. That's from back in my young days. And who do we have here? Say hi, Cassie. Yeah, that's your fishing partner right there, huh? Yeah, when she's not jumping in the water. It's always cool getting to meet a fishing freak on the water. He said he'd been watching for like seven years, since he was 12 years old. That, that, that makes me feel crusty. But thank you guys. John B. Morning! What's going on? Dude. This is the worst part of the trip. I know. I gotta say goodbye. It's leaving. Yeah, I thought, you know what? I needed, I needed this trip a little bit. Did, did you? Yeah, it's a cleanser. It's a soul cleanser. It is. It is. It's this. You know what this is? This is a. This is a spiritual retreat, Ron. It's a journey. This is not a fishing endeavor. This is not a fishing trip. This is a spiritual retreat. Mm -hmm. I'm your shaman. I was like sitting there with my bare feet out in the water. Got a rod. Got corn all over the the the, the ramp. I got bread floating in the water. I was a. I was a. I was a ramp jet for sure. I was out there just. It was just, back to basics. Back to basics. Back to basics. People are gonna love that. Love to see it. So uh, you can check that out on, on John's channel. I have to say John's my favorite fishing YouTuber because of that reason, you know. He's, gets, he gets he's excited about catching fish on bread. And he caught a giant yesterday, it was really funny. So I'm gonna say goodbye to the cabin, have some good times here, and uh, we roll to the lease. rain the last hour of this drive it's all soggy here at the least I was not expecting this I mean this isn't the greatest weather to do what we're gonna do but I'm I'm actually happy about it gonna be make our lives a little more miserable camping out tonight but man it's just nice to see some water down here we've had bad wildfires fully stocked up on arrows in this truck all right, we're pulling up to camp right now. Mike's already here. We got a little break in the clouds ahead of us. So I think we're gonna actually jump in uh, Mike's little adventure vehicle and go try to find a camping spot. Let's go build some camp, y'all. Feels good to be at deer camp. Man, I forgot how awesome this view is. Looking out over the wilderness here. It's a good sound to hear, honestly. Okay, let's get out the gear. Let's go on an adventure. Did you do a rain dance on the I way did. over here or something? Dude, that's what happens when you go to making self bows like the engines. Right? They bring you glorious the, the rain. The dance, the dance. We're gonna be dancing in literally where Indians used to live, making bows. Taking the adventure wagon here. Yes, sir. So, the goal for the day is to get Mike's bow in a uh, basically in a position where he can fine-tune it himself Mike actually was 
more into this stuff than I was um, like a few years ago. Like he was in it before, way before I. He took over my passion because I kind of stopped doing it. <clears throat> what? Yeah, when I I've first always wanted you, to do it. I just. Well, you have a huge Arrowhead collection. Maybe not that's huge, my, but it's it's. That's my sizable. goal is to shoot a deer with an Arrowhead I made with a bow I made. That, I mean, that's awesome. That's an awesome journey. I know one thing, we're gonna be sleeping where Indians slept a couple hundred years ago. There's a vibe. Turkeys. Yeah, there's a gill net. Where? Right there. Oh, it's a saint. Yeah. Now we go saint up some minnows or nothing. Yeah, a meal tonight. Yeah, how are we gonna, where are we camping? Where are we putting these hammocks up? Uh, I'm gonna do one across from the from the back of the land cruiser to a tree, and then we can just go in between the trees. Yeah, I'll just sleep in a tree. No big deal. Been watching a lot of alone lately. <laughs> this lens is fogging up bad. This is gonna be our camp area tonight. About a year ago, I carried this stump down here, and it about broke my back at the time. But I thought it'd be a good work stump to uh you know if we ever need to do some bushcrafting do some some work down here uh set up a camp would be a good good little thing to have so it's still raining but we're gonna get to work my question is though you know there's the occasional camper that comes through here like people that float the river but that's like more of a permanent situation that's sort of strange I mean, that's odd. Welcome to the, the new uh, bushcraft overlanding um, primitive channel. I mean, Mike just started it. Just kidding. But um, I do really enjoy this type of stuff. We had to get a tarp set up because it just continues to rain. So we've got a uh, tarp set up to the overlanding truck. We're going to get a little fire going. And then uh, Mike's going to get started with the hatchet on this wood. So I don't think I've showed you guys the wood, actually. <coughs> Doing a little sweeping. Sorry, yep. getting in the way of the Roomba here. So this is Mike's piece of wood. Osage. You got a good, good stick here, Mike. Thanks. So I cut this down early spring. And it is, uh, I would say... It'd be fully ready in like another month of this Texas heat, but it's it's already turned brown. It's significantly lighter. Um, this piece did not warp or bend. What's your draw length, Mike? Uh, 27 and a half. 27 and a half, that's perfect. So uh, 60, 60 inches would be just perfect for like a 26 to 27 inch draw. Mike's gonna get working on the hatchet right here. I'm gonna set up a little fire since we have finally gotten several inches of rain the ground is really wet and we're gonna have a bunch of mosquitoes and uh, it's a nice place to have a little fire little campground here at the river that's where we're gonna be sleeping tonight we got to figure out the hammocks up under the tarp but uh, i really like that tarp that i got it's a heavy duty one it's got tons of tie-offs on it got it off amazon but it's really good this is my first time shooting my bow in the environment I'm going to be hunting in. It's kind of weird besides shooting it in my backyard. So just shooting my little, uh, my little short bow right now. I suppose probably, eh, it's like 38 pounds, I think, but could definitely kill a deer with it. Got a really sharp broadhead. Thing is, it's so quiet. I mean, this thing is just silent. You're just, you're just hearing a little whisper of a fletching do not think a deer would jump this stream. Oh, bulled him. You know, it's like, what is what is better, extreme speed or extreme quiet? There's a miss. Oh, dead deer. Inconsistent. <laughs> Literally missed, and then that's the thing. You can't really correct your shot. You get one shot. Look at this progress. 
That is hard work right there. Shrapnel. Shrapnel. Mike is working it down, looking good. We got the cambium layer off. Now he's to that yellow stuff. Yep. I'm actually working on my bow. So you guys saw my, my bow uh, video, my latest bow. So since then I've added a slight recurve to the tips, just a hair. And that actually changed uh, the bend of the bow a little bit. So I'm having to take out a little bit on this side to get that bow even. That knot is, is the problem. It's giving me some fits. So we're gonna make these in-camp modifications uh, just using a knife, just taking some shavings off. Sitting under here, under our, our bushcraft tarp with a cold beer. Mike has found arrowheads and didn't you find like some pottery? I found some game balls, like Indian game balls that they basically use as marbles and then game balls. Games. And then I found probably <clears throat> 10 hole points and probably 30 or 40 broken points. Yeah, dude. And I haven't found one hole point. He's got an eye. I don't know if you want to go this far, but you literally could take <coughs> one of those points. I know. I've thought about it, but then it's, it's like, like, what is it? Yeah. I want to preserve that and just make my own. There you go. But the point is we're sitting uh, next to these cliffs back here. The point. Where Indian, yeah, the point. Where um, there's some outcropping, some caves. There's some, where there's been artifacts found in there. <coughs> this is the that. river grinding stone in one of those caves. A grinding stone? Mm -hmm. Dude, see, I mean, this is what's so cool. We're, we're sitting here where um, some people a long time ago were probably doing the same thing. So um, maybe they're they're watching us laughing. Maybe they're thinking, hey, these guys are cool. We will be with them in spirit. May many deer cross their path. Get on top of it and get it out. Time for fire. Well, we could do uh, could do the easy cotton ball thing. You know, since we're here, this is flint that I've actually gotten um, from the, the property here. We'll just get one of these little uh, charred punkwood pieces going, and then we will put that into our boat arch shavings. out on me. Okay, we got a little ember here. All right, starting to smoke a little bit. It's about to light up. Here we go. I needed to lose some weight before elk season. I'm going to Alaska next week. It's starting to look like a bow, man. Just posted up a little light here in the back of the adventure the freaking, vehicle. I need to get one of those. Mike brought some uh, some little ready ready wise meals. I got some boudin, so we're set on food. We just got to work on the hammock situation. But uh, Mike is committed to getting this thing. What do you think, to like a slight bend tonight? Yeah, for sure. Tomorrow's hunting day. I got my bow uh, retillered to where it, I actually brought that bow down, I'm gonna guess, to like just over 40 pounds. I just need to do a makeshift like cloth handle. I've got some, uh, some like t-shirt material. I'm gonna make just a makeshift handle where that arrow isn't slapping the wood and then uh, put some string silencers on there and I think that bow is going to be ready to hunt. Mike's working around. He's actually using the draw knife that was sent to me by one of you guys from Kentucky. That's pretty cool. Um, Thank very you. old draw knife. Pretty awesome. And um, just going to continue working down here. Look at that. Look at that snake in the grain. That's going to be awesome, dude. Boudin is off the grill. That's pretty tasty. Mike's got his hammock set up right here. 
I'm going to set mine up just on the other side. And we're going to be little bunk buddies. We'll see you in the morning. Hopefully we survive the night out here with the animals. Last time I camped down here, I had things walking right next to me. You camped kinda... down here up top? Uh, down here. Oh, you did? Yeah. So you camped down here and up top? Yes, sir. Ooh. Yeah, it's a little sketchy. I'm glad Mike is here because solo, it's a little weird. Not the deal. <laughs> Gonna enjoy the boudin. And, uh, there we are. A couple more Miller lights. We won't really notice any of the animals. See you guys in the morning. We have arisen from our river camp now and we are getting ready to go on a pig hunt. Camp held up pretty well, quite honestly. I got this tarp. I really never envisioned having two dudes camping um, in hammocks underneath it. I kind of got it just as like a little self tarp, but it works out pretty darn good. Just tied it off to the roof racks and that way we get two on the same vehicle. The only problem was every time Mike moved, I could feel it. Every time I moved. He could feel it. I so. never felt it. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, like, oh, yeah, perfect night's sleep. I'm such a brave outdoorsman that I just sleep well in the dirt. It's not true. Um, there was animals moving around, but not enough to, like, keep us super up. Might get bit by bugs, but I didn't because I had the old bug net. I just want to show you guys something real quick. You know, I kept these ropes in my bag, thank goodness. I usually keep some pieces about three or four feet long. I had this rope in case I needed to hang something up in a tree or whatever. But all these knots that I have here, they come out easily. So that's kind of a um, good little outdoorsman, good little bush bushcraft rule. So you don't have to deal with those knots uh, later on. So when I take my little clippy off here, slide that through and then we just pull this out really hard and we got no knot same thing up here I had to tie a, a loop so I did a bowline knot with a little um, a little escape tag just pull that comes right out and just saves you a bunch of time and it doesn't mess up your ropes you don't have to cut things because of knots and, and keep using all of it and the other thing is toggles so if you guys don't know what toggles are they're just little pieces of wood little sticks that go on your ropes you can use it to attach rope to rope or you can use it for a ton of things hanging things that's how I'm hanging my backpack but also great for tying down tents and tarps so you just pull that right out of there and uh, it's done you don't even have a knot to undo off your tarp all right guys pretty big moment right here I've got the arrows with broadheads on there I've got a handle that we just last minute put on there I know it's nothing beautiful but hey at least it's like semi camoed there it is. Much quieter. Do you see that? Dude, it's bad. The mathematics on that. It's because the, the arrow's just flying. God, no, I've got five inch fletchings on it. <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible. Okay, I can't see it from that Dude, it's a full slider. Stand yeah. behind it. It's a curveball. Oh boy. Alright, loading up. Check one, one, two. All right, we got the bow strung up here, guys. The only problem is it is not shooting arrow straight. I've got to figure out what I need to do with my spine or, I don't know, tune my arrows to this bow. The hunt begins. I wonder if you 
sat this pond. If that's gonna be like a factor this fall. Well, y'all, it was hotter than Satan's taint down there. We didn't even see tracks um, after we had so much rain. So just come back in. I'm gonna continue working on um, my bow. My, I'm getting the broadheads to actually fry, fly straight. That's sort of important in the whole uh, in the whole hunting aspect of it. I haven't even crossed that bridge. I've just been shooting field tips, so I'm gonna experiment around with that. But video is over for today, guys. Nice adventure, camping out the river. Did a little stocking, unsuccessful, but man, I can't wait till it gets cooler and we can just do the whole program. The, the whole goal here is to get in a blind or a tree or heck, I don't even know, hide, hide in some brush and get a white-tailed deer close range with our traditional self bows. Thank you guys for being here. God bless you and all your outdoor adventures. Smash that like button for the great outdoors. I'll see you. Now. Plus.